Uh, thanks, everyone, and thanks, Vanessa. Uh, and hello again. My name is Kevin Dobson, and, and I'm with uh, a company, DTE Biomass Energy. Uh, I guess first, thank you for, for the invitation to, to take part in uh, this webinar today. And uh, uh, what I'm here to do is talk through uh, how renewable natural gas is created at, at dairy farms throughout the, uh, the United States. Uh, so what I want to talk through today is just kind of a lot of information, and it's in a pretty short period of time, so I'm going to be going quite quite fast. I can certainly uh, answer questions and, and certainly can, can talk afterwards uh, should anyone have any questions. But first, I want to get kind of a brief overview on, on who uh, our company is. If you're not familiar with DTE, uh, I'll follow that um, with some of the science behind creating renewable natural gas from, from cow manure, uh, then talk through the, uh, the environmental and the economic benefits uh, for the host farms. Uh, explain the increase in popularity of, of RNG, and then finally conclude with uh, describing what makes a good host farm uh, for, for, for a, a good far, home farm candidate. Uh, so very quick introduction to DTE Energy. If you're not familiar who with we are, uh, my parent company is DTE Energy. It's the regulated uh, electric and natural gas utility that serves uh, Southeast Michigan. Uh, we also have a portfolio of non-utility companies uh, of which DTE Biomass Energy is part of that. We're based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we've been creating renewable uh, energy from waste biogas streams for over 30 years now. We currently have 24 biogas projects uh, operating in seven states, and our company principally have been taking biogas generated from, from the breakdown of, of trash at landfills across the country and converted that into uh, either electricity or natural gas. However, with the demand uh, for RNG increasing over these past several years, uh, we expanded outside of landfills and now primarily focused on developing projects using the, the biogas created from, uh, from cow manure at dairy farms and then converting that into RNG. Uh, our, our current project portfolio included those four landfill gas-based projects, uh, but because of our experience on the landfill side, we were able to be one of the first uh, several years ago to, to invest in uh, dairy biogas to RNG projects uh, with, uh, with our initial um, investment in Wisconsin. Uh, we then followed that up by completing four more facilities in Wisconsin, bringing our total RNG operating asset portfolio currently to 11. Uh, we've got about over $250 million in, invested in the dairy RNG space. Uh, continue to see tremendous amount of growth and opportunity, especially in the dairy sector. Uh, we have a directive to, to continue growing and actually our latest dairy uh, dairy based RNG project we are scheduled to break ground in South Dakota as early as next week. Uh, so now on to this uh, kind of the science part of, of how, how, how RNG is created. So these next slides will, will provide a high level overview of how RNG is created at dairy farms and in some details into the actual science going on. Uh, I guess to maybe take a, a really high level, right? The idea of, uh, of RNG is quite simple, right? What if you could capture methane that's the result of organic decay? And rather than allowing that to escape in the atmosphere, you use that uh, instead for a beneficial use. So, so steps number one and two here in this process flow in making RNG is to collect the manure at a farm and we deposit it into uh, an anaerobic vessel where that manure naturally decays, breaks down and creates biogas. Uh, next step number three is to collect this biogas and we send it to a facility that refines the biogas such that it is converted into a product that looks just like fossil fuel based natural gas. And again, this is what's called uh, RNG. Uh, it's fully interchangeable with conventional natural gas and can be transported in our country's existing natural gas pipeline. Uh, to get the RNG into that pipeline, however, if the farm is located close enough to the pipeline, it can be connected directly via uh, another smaller pipeline directly from the facility, as you see here in, in step five. However, if the farm is too far away from the pipeline, then we're, we're kind of back to, to number four here, where we then have to uh, compress load uh, that RNG into specialized trailers. And then we truck that um, on, off, you know, across the road to an offloading facility that's located adjacent to a pipeline where it can then be unloaded and injected. Now that the RNG is in the pipeline, it can now be delivered to the, uh, to the end use. Uh, for us here at DTE and, and most of our uh, other folks in the space right now, that's currently the, the customer's ultimately a, a fueling station out in California that's designed to pump uh, compressed or liquefied natural gas in, into vehicles. And, and I'll get into that part uh, a bit later in the presentation. Uh, so manure management is something that, that dairy farms certainly need to pay a lot of attention to, given its potential impact to the environment, as well as the local community relationships and, and 
certainly the large cost of, of handling that manure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure as most folks know, the dairy industry has, has been consolidating with smaller farms and herds being acquired by larger farms, which has led to, to these larger farms with thousands and thousands of cows in one location. Uh, then obviously need to address the, uh, the large volume of manure that, that comes with that consolidation. So traditionally, if manure is collected by a farm, it usually is placed in these large open lagoons where it either breaks down and evaporates or, or some of it can be land applied as fertilizer. Uh, the collection of manure, however, in an anaerobically sealed container will capture that biogas that's created when the manure naturally decompresses. And as you can see from this slide right there, certainly uh, different ways that you can create these vessels. You can do it from simply covering an, an open manure lagoon like you see on top uh, to, you know, all the way to constructing uh, specialized containers designed to optimize the collection of the biogas either above ground or below ground. So now that we've got the biogas uh, captured and created, it needs to be cleaned and converted into pipeline quality uh, renewable natural gas. Uh, raw, raw biogas coming out of uh, anaerobic digester is typically right around 58% methane, 41% carbon dioxide or CO2, and, and the remainder is being hydrogen sulfide, H2S, uh, or other gases. And there are certainly several ways that this biogas can be processed and refined into RNG. And I, I won't go into all of these specifics here. I just want to kind of kind of highlight and point out that there are certainly different processes uh, that exist, they all work, they all have their, uh, their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, however, I do want to spend, I mean, just a minute to kind of briefly describe the, the process that we at DTE have chosen uh, for our first set of dairy-based RNG projects, and that's what's called a membrane technology. Uh, the slide here just kind of shows both a cartoon cutaway uh, image of a membrane bundle. And, and this membrane can be described as a collection of sort of like porous straws that's if you kind of look at the bottom right, that's a, that's a kind of a cutout uh, showing the fiber bundles. Uh, interesting fact, kind of in one of these single commercial scale cartridges, the fiber length can be as long as 1,000 miles. So there's a, a lot of these little straws kind of put into these membranes. Uh, and what happens is the individual components of the biogas have, have different diffusion rates through the walls of the membrane. So this allows for a, a controlled separation of the biogas. So, so methane can move through the straw lengthwise to the other end while, uh, while the, the components that we don't want, such as that CO2 permeate and move through the walls of the straw, where then we can kind of direct the, those gases away to a flare for, for destruction. Uh, this is one of our R&D facilities at a dairy farm in Wisconsin. You can see the, the long roof in the, in the back is one of the, the large cow barns. Uh, you can see, you know, I just wanted to kind of show this, this quickly just to show that you know, the, these RNG facilities are not some giant industrial refinery, uh, but rather a pretty small footprint. Uh, that image on the bottom right is that's the actual membrane skid itself. You can see that's where the separation occurs. It's kind of hard to see in this photo, but those long kind of cylindrical tubes is where those membranes are housed. Uh, of course, there's other equipment in, in there and compression and some other equipment that aren't shown, but I just wanted to give everyone kind of a sense for the scale of these facilities. Uh, so okay, go, so going back into that process flow, we've created the biogas in the in the vessels. Uh, we've cleaned it on the anaerobic vessels. We've cleaned it up uh, through that membrane technology. So now we have a pipeline quality natural gas project. Now we got to get that to the market, right? So so as I mentioned, very often these these dairies are in very remote areas uh, that aren't really near a point where we can conveniently and, and economically inject this into a natural gas pipeline. So what we've done at, at several fight, uh, sites is employ what's called a, you might hear the word virtual pipeline, uh, where we truck that RNG to one centralized injection facility that's located right on top of a gas pipeline. Uh, and there, that way RNG can be created at these remote farms, compressed uh, and loaded into these tube trailers, which are specifically designed for, for such operations. Uh, I guess to wrap up this section, here's a picture of, of another one of our sites in Wisconsin. Uh, this one's got the digesters as well. Just again, wanted to get a, a sense for scale. Uh, so right now, DTE and others in, in the RNG space are building project at these larger size farms to take advantage of the, uh, the, the economies of scale uh, or rather avoid the disc economies of scale that, that can be encountered at smaller farms. Uh, however, as technology and investment in the RNG space continues, smaller size dairy farms are starting to become uh, more economically viable host sites. Uh, we can start to modulize the process equipment. Uh, we can use some less costly digester designs. A lot of things are coming over from Europe that, that we're able to utilize. 
Uh, and then as, as Vanessa mentioned, right, you can get into what's called a hub and spoke uh, or sort of a pod uh, relationship where you can, uh, you can connect via pipeline multiple farms and, and digesters into one RNG processing facility uh, where maybe when a standalone project uh, or farm is not large enough to support a project. Uh, so hopefully that gives you just again everyone a quick overview on kind of the science and, and how that RNG is created. Wanted to then spend maybe just a, a few minutes on the benefits for the farm itself. So as I'm sure everyone knows, most farms are, are very well run and need to work hard to maximize the value from everything that they do. Uh, they are certainly integrated operations as this slide shows. And ideally what, you know, I think what everyone wants to get to is what is referred to as a, as a closed loop system, right? That you can create where, where the digesters in that RNG processing facility are an important part of that system. Um, so, you know, obviously milking cows, you know, besides producing, you know, six to eight gallons of milk every day can produce, you know, easily over hundred pounds of manure. Again, this, this, well, this, this volume can vary substantially. It's based on the size and the type of the cow and location and, and, and the feed. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of manure uh, to, to deal with. And with the digester, that manure can, can be directed through the digester, as we talked about, create the biogas uh, as that manure decomposes. Uh, of course, that biogas can then be collected and put into beneficial use as a jar and G. Uh, the manure that does come out of the digester is now referred to in the industry as digestate. Uh, that can then be refer, uh, returned back to the farm. Uh, some farms use this as bedding. They can put it through a screw press, dry it out, and use that to, to actually bed the cows. Um, or this digestate can also be land applied to crops. And, and because it's reduced pathogens and as a result of the anaerobic process, can usually be applied over a longer period of time uh, rather than sort of raw manure. Uh, you know, this is also a nice opportunity the, if the farm wants to, to take this digestate and do some further processing that to fil filter out and, and separate nitrogen and phosphorus and really try to get to uh, kind of the ultimate goal of, of clean water. Uh, for, for both the farm owner as well as the local community, processing this manure through a, 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 an anaerobic digester provides several environmental benefits. So again, remember that that biogas created is 58% you know, methane, 41% carbon dioxide. Uh, methane is, as most folks know, is 25 times more potent a greenhouse gas than, than carbon dioxide, uh, with both gases being a, a powerful pollutant. So you know, a, a digester could collect that biogas that otherwise has been released into the, directly into the atmosphere. Uh, if it's sitting in an open lagoon or if it's applied as raw manure onto the, uh, to the, to the land as fertilizer. Uh, so that's certainly a, a nice environmental benefit. Uh, also that manure coming out of the digester, uh, digester again referred to as digestate, certainly does not smell as bad as those volatile pathogens have been destroyed. That's certainly very good for, for community relations. Uh, and also without a digester, that farm that collects manure in a lagoon can land apply it. However, large quantities of manure re require a larger amount of acreage and have seasonable limitations whereas digestate can usually be applied later into the year and require less land. Again, this is very um, site specific, but in general, that's what we're seeing. Uh, the reduced pathogens also significantly improve water quality as this is digestate, not raw manure that's field applied. Uh, with the resulting RNG being used as a vehicle fuel, as I mentioned, this is displacing regular gasoline uh, and diesel fuel, which is also provides a nice economic benefit, I'm sorry, an environmental benefit. Uh, but switching over there, like I mentioned, there is uh, some, some, some nice economic benefits as well uh, for the farm and for the surrounding area. So host farms will usually participate in the economics of an RNG project. They usually receive some sort of payment from the RNG facility, and these payments can be significant. Uh, and they are certainly welcomed by the farm, you know, in, in today's really tough kind of milk market. They get a nice, uh, a, a nice uh, um, economic payment that isn't tied to, to milk prices. And finally, these RNG projects can bring new jobs to rural America, you know, not only for operating the facilities, but for all the ancillary jobs uh, that are created during the construction and also to support these projects. All right, so I got a couple more sections for you quickly. I thought it would be interesting to kind of talk through the demand side of the RNG a little bit and kind of what's driving this, this RNG popularity. Uh, as I mentioned, most of the RNG produced today is used as a vehicle fuel. Uh, Vanessa, Vanessa mentioned both the federal and the state programs that have incented the use of RNG as transportation fuel. Uh, the state of California definitely has the program that is most aggressive and, 
and it's currently and, and therefore the most RNG is transported through the existing natural gas pipeline to California, where it ends up as CNG or, or as LNG in vehicle fueling stations. Uh, more and more states, however, are implementing similar programs as well. And we're also seeing more and more demand and interest from the other market sectors. Uh, a number of companies who are looking to reduce their carbon footprint continue to expand. Initially, this was mostly focused on electric uh, needs that you could service through you know, kind of wind and solar. However, companies are now looking at greening up their gas usage as well. And uh, RNG is a, is a nice product of choice there. And then finally, natural gas utility companies are, are now actively out seeking RNG. As many gas utility companies are committing to net zero emissions, uh, such as our company, D, uh, my parent company, DT Gas. So I'm sure if you're a, if you're a consumer of, a, uh, of natural gas, uh, more than likely your own gas utility company is offering some sort of uh, a green, green uh, program where maybe for a few dollars more every month, you can add to your uh, utility bill, uh, you can reduce your own carbon footprint. So that certainly has led also to the, to the advancement and demand of RNG. Um, however, as I said, most of the dairy-based RNG today goes into vehicle fuel. So I just wanted to spend a brief minute on that part of the business uh, because this, this is a drive to reduce the emissions and due to the lower emission rates of RNG, it can earn a strong premium in, in this vehicle fuel market. And as I mentioned, as Vanessa mentioned, there are two main government incentive programs. The one is the Federal Renewable Fuel Standard, the RFS, and that's a federal program that was developed to encourage the development uh, of domestic fuels. And then the low carbon fuel standard or LC, LCFS, that's California's program. And that was implemented to reduce what's referred to as a carbon intensity of vehicle fuels uh, to reduce that by 20% by the year 2030. Uh, both programs are additive. So if you produce RNG and you find that way into, uh, into a California, you can generate uh, both what's referred to as a RIN and an LCFS credit. And so you can see in this, in this uh, chart here, dairy-based RNG can, can earn quite a big premium, you know, up to $77 per MMBTU. And you compare that to the three to four dollars that really uh, is the actual gas component. The, the, the fossil fuel natural gas is priced in the market. So you can see quite a quite a premium there. Uh, so now into the last section, which I wanted to uh, uh, I get a lot of questions on well, what makes a good dairy candidate for an RNG project? And uh, there's certainly numerous factors out there, but several key ones I would just wanted to kind of quickly look at. Uh, first one, probably, and the most important one, is the size of the host farm, meaning the size of the herd that is the source of the feedstock for the RNG. Uh, the larger the farm, the better, and uh, with a minimum cow population, at least for, for somebody uh, like a DTE right now, it's probably around 5,000 head for a dedicated RNG project at that farm. Now, again, if there's smaller, you know, several smaller farms in the area that are close to each other, then that pod can be created uh, where that manure or the biogas can, can be combined. Uh, manure quality and manure quantity certainly is uh, it kind of goes hand in hand as the quality can have a uh, can have a significant impact on the project viability. Um, you know the, how those cows are are uh, housed certainly are uh, is a, something that we need to look at. Certainly, collecting manure from cement floored you know cross vent barns like you typically see in states in Wisconsin is is quite different from cows kept in let's say open dirt pastures. That's maybe more common in the, in the Western United States. Uh, manure collection practices certainly is something that we look at, whether it's scraping, flushing, or vacuuming, that can certainly impact the quality. Uh, if the cows are bedded on sand, which you know, a lot of farms do, that can certainly uh, require some additional processing to get that manure separated. We don't want those, uh, that sand filling up those anaerobic digesters. And then again, finally, just to, to say it again, a critical factor is location of that farm. Again, if it's ideally located next to the pipeline, that's our preference and in the, in the, in the industry's preference. Uh, if not, we, then we can do a, a virtual pipeline, the, the trucking, uh, but it just kind of adds cost and complexity. So that's what I have for you guys today. I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen and, and hope you find RNG uh, interesting and fascinating and like I do. And again, here's my contact info. Certainly uh, love to, to talk with anybody should they have any questions.